I'm optimistic. Um, I, I'm very, I'm looking forward to this. Right now on ABC 10 News at four o'clock, San Diego restaurants excited about an idea to get more people at tables. We break down the idea that could have the county paying for part of the bill. Plus the city's efforts to help parents with affordable childcare as they begin to return to the workplace. And positively San Diego, the family celebrating three generations of San Diego State University graduates. ABC 10 News at 4 starts now. As more people get comfortable going out, San Diego is working to rebound from the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kimberly Hunt and Supervisor Jim Desmond is now proposing an idea to help bring customers back to restaurants once California reopens on June 15th. ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala is joining us live from Del Mar and Mimi, this would benefit customers and the restaurant owners. And Kimberly, Supervisor Jim Desmond just wrapped up that press conference about 20 minutes ago. It was here at the Broken Yolk in Del Mar. He's proposing this program called Dine Out and Help Out for San Diego County. So he was joined by local business owners, including the owner of this Broken Yolk. Desmond says the federal government has allocated about $300 million to San Diego County for recovery efforts and different programs due to the pandemic through this American Rescue Plan Act. So he's asking for $50 million of that money to be set aside to help restaurants bounce back while giving customers a deal at the same time. So if he gets the green light to move forward with this, restaurants that sign up will offer customers 50% off of their meal or up to $10 if they dine out Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday starting on June 15th is what he hopes. Uh, restaurants would then be reimbursed for the full amount of the meal by the county. If you go out to a restaurant on Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, party of five, you could get up to $50 off of your bill. And then the participating restaurants would submit that discounted coupon or they, they would submit that to the county then for the reimbursement of those dollars. And Desmond hopes to bring this to the Board of Supervisors for a vote, possibly on June 8th, as they collaborate over different recovery ideas. And coming up at five, you're going to hear from a restaurant owner who says this would be a game changer when it comes to actually bringing people back to dine out. We're live in Del Mar. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. Just under half of all adults in the United States are now fully vaccinated, according to the CDC. That's because 25 states and Washington, D.C. have given shots to at least half of their adult population. The amount of shots given daily has been slowing down, but so are new cases of the virus and deaths. That's compared to just a month ago. Now, Uber is joining the vaccination efforts, the ride sharing company providing us these images of what you will see in their app when you open it up. Uber made a deal with the White House to offer a $25 discount for each ride to a vaccination site. Now, since there are two shots and each require a trip to and from, that's a total of $100 in credits. Now, those discounts start today for Uber. Lyft is also offering similar discounts of up to $15 for each vaccine ride. The CDC is monitoring cases of heart inflammation in more than a dozen young people who received the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. And the rare disorder is called myocarditis. So far, advisors say that the CDC has not seen more cases of this in vaccinated young people than they have in those who have not received the vaccine. Still, the Independent Advisory Committee is continuing to monitor this data every week. A return to the workplace is in sight, and for many San Diegans who have been at home this past year, that means figuring out childcare. ABC 10 News anchor Vanessa Van Hefty explains today's push for the city to provide parents with support as they return to the workplace. Working mom Shelby Gomez has been shuffling to find childcare for her two children. It's so hard when you don't have the childcare that meets your needs. She works at the YMCA. Her job is to help families find child care, but she found herself in a bind, even having to move. During COVID, we moved in with my husband's mother in Vista. So we live in San Diego, so um, a bit of a trek to move in with uh, grandma, but it was 
it was wonderful that we had that support system. But so many don't have that family support. There was a child care crisis in San Diego County before the pandemic. There was only enough licensed child care facilities to serve 45% of the demand. During COVID, 522 child care facilities were shuttered, a 20% loss in the county. According to the California Budget and Policy Center, three in 10 child care jobs were lost during the pandemic. Today, City Councilman Raul Campillo called on the city to launch a search for space where San Diego could provide more child care services, he says, at an affordable price. We urgently need more child care and we need child care facilities and resources for children here in the city of San Diego. And unfortunately, recent trends indicate that the city is becoming less family friendly. Filling a need that Campillo says can no longer be ignored when Shelby knows all too well. I've been on so many phone calls with friends who are just crying, you know, telling me, I don't know if I can take it any longer. I don't know what to do, but this is just too hard. Vanessa Van Hefty, ABC 10 News. Campillo has asked the city to identify available space for child care facilities and have a report ready to review in six months. Firefighters worked quickly to knock down a small brush fire in Ramona. The so-called Fern Brook fire scorched four acres. It broke out just after noon. Sky 10 was overhead as firefighters attacked the flames from the ground and the air. No structures were damaged and there were no injuries. As our state faces drought conditions, Governor Gavin Newsom wants to spend $2 billion to battle wildfires. Today, he announced a proposal that would pay for firefighting equipment and gear, including new planes and helicopters. He said the money would also help pay for forest management and the creation of fire breaks. Last year was the state's most destructive fire season on record with more than 4 million acres burned. Newsom's $2 billion plan must first be approved by the state legislature. And on this beautiful Monday, meteorologist Angelica Campos is tracking the next couple of nice days ahead. Angelica. Hi, Kim. That's right. We have a few day, nice days ahead, but for today, we're going to look at the fire danger and what it means. Typically, we look at temperatures, relative humidity, and the wind. But the scenario that we're in right now in San Diego County is a little bit different because it's been so dry in the county that it doesn't take much to really increase that fire danger. So we'll have to do anything that could potentially start a fire, avoid it completely. Relative humidity is down to 13% in Julian and Ramona, where that fire was, 16%. So the brush and its path is going to burn very quickly. So we have to help our firefighters by not starting any fires. Temperatures right now approaching 90 degrees in Ramona. It is also very warm. And the other element that we look at in fire weather, is the wind and the winds are gusting at times and alpine gusting close to 20 miles per hour. We still have one more day potentially of this elevated fire danger before temperatures go back down. We'll make sure to break it all down and show you when the weather will be nice and comfortable once again. We'll check back in in a couple of minutes. Thank you and keep track of the weather conditions in your area anytime with our ABC 10 News mobile app. It is free in the App Store as well as Google Play. Today, a judge denied two requests in the case of the Navy sailor who drove off the Coronado Bridge, killing four people below. Richard Sapolio's attorneys asked to get him off parole and to expunge his convictions. But the judge says Sapolio hasn't taken care of the restitution that he owes the families of the victims from the 2016 crash. He can refile that request in August to try to clear his record. He was released early on good behavior and because of COVID-19 protocols after serving just three years of his nine year sentence. In the last 30 minutes, we have learned a military plane crashed into the backyard of a home near Las Vegas. Our sister station reports that it's some sort of fighter jet. It crashed near the Nellis Air Force Base. The base sent out a statement saying that it is aware of the incident involving an aircraft associated with Nellis Air Force Base, and it will provide updates as they become available. Right now, no word on any injuries or what caused the plane to go down.